Guys, I gotta be completely honest. I uploaded this exact video about a week ago and there were a couple of things that I said wrong and everybody and their mom ripped me about seven new assholes for it. But I took it as a learning experience. I have done some more research. I have done some more digging. I have gotten to know my class a little bit better. As I've mentioned before, I am a returning player and there are some things in the game that I have overlooked. So I wanna first of all apologize if I have misled anybody and I wanna thank you for at the very least providing feedback so that I know where I need to improve. You have all helped me grow as a person, a player, and a content creator. So let's try it again. Guys, without further delay, these are the actual best hunter pets to take in PvP. Let's get right into it. All right, guys, before we get into it, it, it I just want to let you know that it's pretty important to know how to macro these abilities that I'm going to tell you to your hotbar. I will put a link down below with an article with useful hunter macros. But if you don't find the info you need, you can just Google self cast whatever pet ability macro. And that's just going to allow you to use your pet's ability on yourself and not just your pet. So let's get right into it. So let's start with a baseline here, guys. So we're going to need to know about our pet families. If you've watched my videos in the past, then you'll know that cutting is good for mobility. Ferocity is good for a little bit more haste, a little bit more leech. And tenacity is going to give you just a little bit more health, a little bit more tanking power. The community generally agrees that cunning is arguably the best, uh, especially for arenas, because it gives you the master's call ability, which is going to stop movement and pairing effects for four seconds. And the master's call ability is going to be good to get out of roots and snares not stuns this is one of the first mistakes that i made in the first video that i published once again i apologize uh so master's call does not work on stuns only roots and snares it's also going to give you plus eight percent movement speed generally just going to allow you to move around the map a little bit quicker a little bit more freely and either close the distance between you and your target if you're playing survival or keep distance away from your target uh, if you're playing marksman or beast mastery but me personally i like ferocity you get a good 10 percent leech was going to grant you a little bit more survivability and the primal rage effect is going to increase you and your party's haste by 30 percent for 40 seconds so it's a good damage boost there for an entire 40 seconds so as far as the ferocity pet family goes guys uh you're actually not going to be able to use primal rage in arenas and this is the second mistake that i made in the first edition of this video which i mean it makes sense it's such a big damage boost and i have tried to find a all-inclusive list of all the abilities that are disabled in arenas and i can't seem to find one so i'm asking for your help again if anybody knows any abilities uh aside from primal rage or aside from anything really that gives the bloodlust buff let me know now in the comments like i said y'all are the ones that help me out y'all are the ones that check me Y'all are the only ones that are going to get on my ass if I spread out some false information. And just so you know guys, for future reference, green is going to be cunning, red is going to be ferocity, and blue is going to be tenacity for the remainder of this video. So let's talk about arenas. Like I've mentioned, cunning is going to be the best. And what you want to look for is a pet with the mortal wounds ability. It says grievously wounds the target, reducing the effectiveness of any healing received for 10 seconds. This is generally considered the go-to for, uh, for arenas, especially in uh, higher tier ranked. So if you're serious about high CR arenas or you would like to be, I would recommend that you would combine mortal wounds with a cunning family pet. That's gonna be hyena, raptor, and rodents because not only are you getting mortal wounds, but you're also getting the pathfinding ability and you're also getting the uh, master's call ability, which is that stopping movement pairing effects, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, moving on. If you for some reason don't wanna take cunning, your next best option is actually going to be tenacity because although ferocity's uh, leech will help you with survivability, the tenacity family does bring that extra defensive cooldown, which I think in arenas is going to be more valuable, especially considering that primal rage is just utterly disabled. Pets with the mortal wounds ability are also going to be good in world PVP and in battlegrounds. But just particularly good in arenas because it's usually, you know, it's either two versus two or three versus three, and there's usually gonna be a healing class on the other team, or at least a support healer. Uh, secondly, for arenas, another amazing ability to take with your pets is gonna be Tranquilize and Dispel. It says remove one enrage and one magic effect from an enemy. Uh, so this, this is awesome. Imagine you're super close to killing a ret paladin and he pops his wings. What are you gonna do? You're just gonna wait it out and let him heal up? No, absolutely not. 
you're going to tranquilize and dispel and you're going to get rid of those wings same thing with uh like shamans and the earth shields or even mages and the shields that they put up so you've got the moth the spore bat and the water strider and the water strider i will talk a little bit more in depth uh, regarding uh world pvp and even battlegrounds uh on the other side spirit beast uh if you're running bm which i'll talk a little bit more about in the next section spirit beast awesome for survivability uh but yeah so if you're not running mortal wounds guys tranquilize and dispel hands down in arenas hands down so guys if you're unaware going into shadowlands revive pet is now going to be a four second cast it was originally going to be six which is just absolutely ridiculous uh but that's going to be up from two seconds so especially for beast mastery hunters you're going to be particularly susceptible to enemy teams targeting your pets to cut off your main source of damage which is why i'm going to recommend the exotic pet species of quilins aka the stonehounds because their exotic ability is called eternal guardian and it says when used your pet will miraculously return to life with full health guys if revive pet stays at four second cast and you're going to be playing beast mastery quilin is what you're going to want to go with because as I mentioned in my previous video, if the enemy team kills your pet and it's gonna take you four seconds to revive them. Granted, you could you could turtle revive, but that's a waste of a turtle. As you're sitting there for four seconds trying to revive your main source of damage, the enemy team is going to be ruthlessly attacking you, not only because your main source of damage is cut off and you're completely vulnerable, but also because they know if you revive that pet, you're gonna put the fucking work on them. And speaking of you know, your pet being over-targeted. Quilins also do come with the trigger defense ability. It says when health falls below 40%, reduce damage taken by 60% for 15 seconds. Can only occur once every two minutes. Um, so in addition to your instant revive, you're also gonna have a little bit more survivability with your pet. Guys, if you're running BM, going into Shadowlands, and you're doing arenas, Quilin is gonna be your number one pick. Now, if you're not running BM, you're probably not gonna have as much of a problem uh, having your pet targeted because enemy team's gonna know that you know most of your damage doesn't come from your pet it actually comes from you so again I would go with in that situation mortal wounds or tranquilize and dispel so moving on to battlegrounds one of my favorite abilities that I like to hunt for in a pet is the slow ability it says reduce movement speed by 50% for six seconds so if you're playing survival you have wing clip right but you have to be on the target to slow them if you're playing Marksman, if you're playing Beast Mastery, you know, you got things like Concussive Shot, which is good. But taking a pet with a slow ability, first of all, for survival, it's going to be a ranged slow, which is super nice. Uh, and for for all your other specs, you're just going to have another way to hinder your opponent's mobility. Now, like I said, we have Wing Clips, Concussive Shots, Tar Traps, uh, you know, we have a ranged stun with our pet. We have a lot of CC options, but in those scenarios where you really want to keep distance from your opponent or close the distance, the slow ability is, it's kush. It's dope. I love using a pet with the slow ability. I always, like I said, I go with um, ferocity. So I'm usually out here with a wolf or a spider. Um, but this is also going to be great in arenas. If you don't, uh, if you for some reason don't want to take mortal wounds, slow is going to be really good. Um, because like I said, you either need to stay right up on your opponent or you need to stay far away from them. And this is just going to assist in that. So pairing the slow ability with the ferocity pet family is going to basically be able to combine the CC option with a little bit of leech and a little bit of haste. But combining slow with a cunning pet family, if you think about it this way, you're slowing the opponent and you're speeding yourself up. Like they're not going to be able to touch you if you play your cards right. So if this sounds like a playstyle that resonates with you. Go ahead and pick one of these pets in any of these three columns, but particularly the first two. Another pet that I like to take, uh, especially in, in Battlegrounds, is going to be Spirit Beasts. Now, unfortunately, they do belong to the Tenacity family, uh, so you're not going to get those extra delicious abilities that come with Cunning and Ferocity. However, they do bring an ability called Spirit Mend. It says the Spirit Beast heals the current friendly target for however much, plus an additional however much over 10 seconds so it's an instant heal and it's also a heal over time spearmen can be targeted at your pet it can be targeted at yourself and it can be targeted at any team member so spirit beast this is not you know and i didn't really know where to put it in this video um i went ahead and threw it in the battleground section but really it's just for anybody who needs a little bit of extra survivability i find that when i'm playing bm i get over targeted to all hell when i'm in battlegrounds i like to take a spirit pet uh because we don't have a lot of options for healing ourselves as hunters. We basically have exhilaration 
uh, and that and I mean that's basically it <laughs> uh, I mean unless you're taking a ferocity pet it's gonna give you that leech yada 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 point being that if you need an extra heal go with the spirit beast guys um, like I said unfortunately it is tenacity but if you're having trouble staying alive then that extra 5% uh, health that tenacity pets give you will help you just a little bit uh, it's also worth mentioning that spirit beasts are exotic so this is going to be, you know, applicable only to the Beast Mastery spec. Also guys, as I previously mentioned, Spirit Beasts cope with the Tranquilize and Dispel ability. So you've got not only your, your Dispel, but you've also got that on Command Heal. You've also got the Survival of the Fittest ability, reducing damage by 20% for 6 seconds, as well as a plus 5% maximum health boost. Uh, honestly, in Battlegrounds, Spirit Beasts bring such amazing utility even if you're doing rbgs and you got a couple hunters i would really recommend at least having one spirit beast on the team uh as well as a pet with a slow ability uh and while we're on the topic of battlegrounds guys it is worth mentioning that for and i said it earlier that i take ferocity at battlegrounds and it's it's worth mentioning that ferocity's primal rage is great for epic battlegrounds with pve elements like ashran or all track valley if you need to take down the enemy leader, if you need to take down the little ogre uh, on the side of Ashram, the Primal Rage ability, this, this, like I said, it's going to benefit everybody for 40 seconds trying to kill that enemy leader or, or landmark on the battleground. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Um, so moving on to world PvP, uh, basically we're going to want to take any pet with mobility benefits specifically feather manes pterodax and water striders so feather manes and pterodax they both come with the ability updraft now it says your pet beats its powerful wings slowing the fall speed of both itself and the hunter for 30 seconds i don't know if you guys watch soulscape but that dude is always fighting on top of some type of cliff or hill next thing you know if he's about to die he just jumps off and flies down with his glider if you have a glider great but you don't need one not if you're taking a feather mane or, or a pterodax so there are benefits and drawbacks to these two pets pterodaxes are in the cunning family which is very good but they're also exotic which means you have to be running the beast mastery spec feather manes are not exotic can be used by any spec but they are in the tenacity family and you also need to acquire here it says on the bottom you must first acquire the skill to tame feather manes which is taught by tome of the hybrid beast uh i went over this in in one of my guides i'll put a link up top for you guys um uh, and down in the description uh, and that guide is not only going to be on you know the tome of the hybrid beast but all of the skill tames and all the challenging tames it's basically all the rarest pets in the game it's my most popular video you should really check it out uh, <laughs> anyways but moving on another potentially good pet to take in world pvp is water striders this is really only going to be applicable to an area where there's no flying um so it comes with the ability surface trot allowing you to walk on water but damage is going to cancel the effect. So if you're in the middle of a fight, you're not going to be able to run across the water. But in some scenarios, you might be able to, I don't know, sneak up on an unsuspecting player if you're standing out on the water and get the jump on somebody. Or if you're able to outrun them, get out of combat, they're still chasing you and you can just run out over the water. Now, in regards to Water Striders, guys, as I did say previously, they do have the Tranquilize and Dispel ability. So not only are you going to be able to walk on water, you're also going to be able to dispel uh, enemy shields and uh, water striders uh they're actually also going to be pretty good in battlegrounds for any of those battlegrounds that have a river running through or any type of of water that you need to get over another big thanks to everybody who chewed me out for the first edition of this video uh and once again i do apologize for spreading any misinformation i do not want to mislead you guys and like i said I'm learning myself, I'm growing as a player, person, and content creator as well. And I just wanted to thank you for bearing with me and continuing with your support. You guys are awesome. Guys, I'm Blue Monkey, and until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Peace.